All right, let's talk about the coaching aspect it's in its infancy here in South Africa. And I've always believed you need a team around you. You need people that can walk a journey with you. And there's a huge chasm between physicians and patients. And I really feel that health coaching should grow significantly because, you know, it's the facilitative process of people taking accountability of their health, which is, I think, fundamentally important. There's a value mismatch of the amount of time and resources people put into their health and their performance until now they've got a huge diagnosis and now they've got a huge problem and now they just want to try and throw money at it. Meanwhile, for 30 years, they've unfortunately not understood compound health. You know, they've understood compound interest, but they're not understood compound health. So tell us yeah. about your coaching program and why coaches are exceptionally important uh, along the journey of, of health and, and, and performance. Yeah, uh, you know, both are really important. Um, and there's a problem with health coaching. It needs to be um, really it, the, uh, raised up. Um, to the level that I teach, which is they're really just non-licensed clinicians. They're really good clinicians. I mean, they can work at any clinic, no matter how serious the problems are, and be helpful around the, again, the things a person, the patient could be in control of. The, the, uh, so that's a very high level of health coaching, if you will, non-licensed practitioners, non-licensed clinicians. The problem is that health coaching is being commandeered by modern medicine. Unfortunately, I think they're appropriating the potential um, and squashing it because the only study being done right now by the U.S. government, the National Institute of Health, is whether a health coach in a setting can help increase medication compliance. So in, in the case of irritable bowel disease, so health coaching, there, yeah, I mean, there's the, the, that would work really good for the pharmaceutical, the standard, same old BS belief system. Um, and, uh, and so um, there's, that's what we want to be aware of is our health coach is just coming in to help make sure Mrs. Smith is taking her IBD medication. Yeah. Which it's it's effective health coaches can do that because they work on the psychology the motivation active listening and questioning and they can get to why mrs smith wants to get rid of those symptoms and therefore continue to take your medication and that's the only study being done right now by the nih and it's kind of disappointing really um because health coaches are capable of so much more if they're trained properly, like with me and my program, it's the anatomy, physiology, biochemistry behind the lab work so that then you can understand what general principles or principles of health be, building need to be applied. Now, that's a useful non-licensed clinician who could work with the team. And sure, the per doctor might say, oh, Mrs. Smith, you've got this disease or that disease, some condition that needs medical oversight. Yeah. But in the meantime, you also need to DRESS. And that's why we have Reed's team here to uh, look at other data, which don't concern the doctor because they're not diagnostic tests. They're functional tests to just look for what's out of balance. There's no diagnosis in there. That's why yeah. doctors don't run a lot of this stuff. Um, a lot of it's considered research use only, even though we've been doing it for 25 years, which is kind of weird. It just means insurance companies don't want to pay for it. So for the struggling person out there, if you're an executive and you uh, have the money, you know, you want to hire a uh, functional medicine practitioner who's at least going to look for underlying causes and conditions. You might have to pay cash out of pocket for some of these labs, not covered by I, I guess South Africa has the like England, the health savings, or the, what do you call it, the nationalized health care, like Canada, and that. you don't. No. Well, no. good on you. Yeah. So here in the states, you know, insurance is expensive. I still have to have mine by law, and um, and things like that. But it just doesn't cover the right labs. Yeah, so okay. the, your question about health coaching, where is it? fit into the uh, medical model either 
it fits into it by compliance for that model or it's outside of that model and we're, we work out of a different sandbox so to speak and that's that's where i think it should be going True. and that's the final the final the pure form of functional medicine is what we do because we're not bound by certain algorithms you, like doctors in this country if they see certain things, they have to diagnose to get paid. If it's insurance, they have to diagnose to get paid. That diagnosis has a standard of care you can't go outside of, not right away. You have to try a few things that you know aren't going to work first. It's really kind of insane. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, All and right. so so let me let me just wrap it up by saying that we're in a different sandbox, and it comes from many years ago. I was in the clinic. People wanted to build health, but their ladder was on the wrong wall. They were going to physicians looking for a diagnosis, and they wanted to, well, that's not the right diagnosis. And they'd get a different diagnosis from each doctor. And, and they're trying to be compliant, and they're trying to do a little diet and exercise, and it's just not working. Their ladders were on the wrong wall. So we built a different wall, completely different sandbox, only investigative functional labs, and then only the things you could be, no medication, no surgery, only what you can be in control of to reach. What, what are you going up the ladder for? To reach genetic potential. So it's it's the highest form. Could that work well in, in uh, South Africa within the medical system? No, you kind of have to do both parallel and then see where they could be integrated by mm -hmm. open-minded positions.